Hey there, fellow travelers, Mark here with Baldur's World, and today we're here in Malta, and today we're going to talk about are the don'ts of visiting Malta. And the first thing I'm going to tell you, don't forget to look right when you cross the street, because they drive on the left here. Look, Malta at one time wanted to be part of Great Britain, and so there are some influences here from that time. Like, you'll see the red phone boxes occasionally. They'll drive on the left side of the road. English is all over the place. But one thing you really need to remember is make sure you look right before you cross the street so you don't get hit. Because the traffic here, I want to say this, don't mess with the traffic. It is so busy in the cities that it really is not necessarily dangerous, but it's really frustrating because I got to tell you, don't get in a hurry when you're here. Because when you look and see things, you say, oh, the distance is pretty close. Like, oh, look, the left is right over there. I'm here in Siena. Oh, we just go around the, the harbor here and I'll be there in no time. No, the traffic makes it forever, okay? So don't get in a hurry when it comes to drive anywhere. Also, don't get in a hurry when you go to a restaurant. It's a little bit, I mean, we're on an island. Think island time, a bit slower paced. Enjoy those meals, enjoy those drinks. Enjoy the conversation with your friends when you're here because it's gonna take some time. But honestly though, don't mess with the traffic because that means when you've got to fly out from the airport, Give yourself that extra time, not for the check-in process, but for the driving process with the traffic, okay? The thing is, you can rent a car when you're here. The traffic is really kind of frustrating, like in the cities, but I gotta tell you, don't expect a lot of people when you get out of the cities because as compact and congested as it is in the towns, once you get out, it really opens up like, wait, where everybody go, all right? So don't think it's crowded everywhere. Get out a bit, Some see some of the towns on the west coast, through the north coast, south, Get away from Valletta Sliema, you really start to see, hey, it's actually pretty chill here. Because I gotta tell you, don't think those crowds are everywhere. Yes, in Valletta, when you're up there walking along the main street, you're seeing all the churches and everything, and taking in all the cool balconies they have, you will notice a lot of people, but that crowded isn't in some of the other places. We were in Medina earlier today, and we were walking around with only a few tourists out there. It is really nice, so just know, if you go to even the countryside, or you go to some of the other villages, the crowds really, really whew, go away. So you really get to enjoy more of your time to yourself without 400 people passing you at one time. Now, speaking of Valletta across the water, uh, one thing I had to tell you is when you're there, don't forget to look up and see all the churches of that air. But if you want to know one of the really true architectural features of Malta that you can see a ton of in Valletta, are the balconies. I mean, seriously, the balconies are a thing here in Malta. So that's one of those things you're like, oh yeah. They do have a lot of balconies. It's not like the balcony I'm standing on now, but these kind of architectural feature balconies, you want to see that. But when you go to Valletta, you'll see the architecture, you see the churches that are there. Go see the outdoor theater. You can go, you go see productions of theater at the outdoor theater with music and all kinds of stuff. It's such a cool thing. Just walking the pedestrian street down there, church after church after side after side. It's just, it's just a great place to eat and enjoy because that's where a lot of restaurants are as well. So don't pass up Valletta when you're there. And the thing is, is when I think about all the churches that are here, I mean, honestly, there's a saying here, um, there's more churches than there are days of the year. I mean, there really are hundreds of churches here in Malta. Remember, there's only 400,000 people living in Malta and they have hundreds of churches. And when you go around and when you see when the festas are coming and you see them getting all decorated and they put the lights all around them and things are decorated, it's just so wonderful. So check out those churches because remember, the Crusaders were here, Sicily on this place, Spain on this place. I mean, there's fortified churches that are just like, yes, we're here to stand the test of time, to hold back and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just really cool when you see all the churches throughout the island. And when you see them, when they get turned on with the lights, they get done up for the fest. It's, it's really cool. And I think that's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited about this because they are really cool. Another thing I really want to say is uh, don't forget about the festas. In the summertime, when the festivals, the patron saint days are going, for the local communities around here, there's parties and festivals in the little towns, not just one for the whole island, but different parts. So you can, when you're here, look up and see what towns have a fest if you're here in the summer and go and enjoy that because it can be a fun thing for a family or friends. So something to really check out because they do decorate the, the churches, they decorate the streets, there's there's prom, there, there's parades and stuff. I mean, it's just really kind of a cool thing. And there are bands playing at, you know, remember I talked about like British influence here, so the British like, military musician kind of stuff bands yeah they have those here too so you have that so it's really kind of a cool thing to do and and if you're going out and exploring i gotta tell you this don't forget to go gonzo for gozu look gozu is one of the islands you can take a ferry out to when you're here crystal clear blue water it is gorgeous you want to go there you want to take that in with the beaches that are there 
with just everything. It's just one of those like nature visits you want to do to use a day just to reconnect with nature. It's fantastic. And if you are looking to explore more of Malta, not just doing Valletta, honestly, if you're going to go to one place, don't skip out on Medina. I mean, Medina is the old capital. You got St. Paul's Cathedral here you can go check at. It is gorgeous inside. You have to pay to go in the church. It's part of the museum complex. There's a museum and the cathedral together. You can do that. There's museums that are here. You have the walls of the city. Like, you'll see the moat. There's this great park down in the moat around the city walls to check that out. Wandering the little streets here. I mean, this is my favorite place to go. There's some restaurants and, and wine bars that are actually on top of the uh, walls. And you can you know, take in great views and have some great food when you're here. But one thing that's different is you're a lot less crowded here than you are in Valletta. Like, this is where you can see some history and historic stuff, but not be overrun with a ton of tourists. So... That's kind of a nice thing to do when you are here. And there's some really good restaurants you can eat at here as well. So it is an option. And if you're looking for a place to stay, there's a lot of, you know, Airbnbs. But here in Rabat, which is like, you know, they're literally right next to each other here in Medina. You can't go wrong. Your pastizzi that we're going to talk about. Yeah, there's a place here that literally outside the walls. It's only 50 cents for the pastizzi of the place literally right outside the walls. So Medina, don't pass it up. Now, as a tourist, people ask me, Mark, what should we buy when we go there? If you want to get a cool Maltese souvenir, get the glass. Maltese glass, Valletta glass, however you want to call it, however they sell it to you in the stores. But Maltese glass is actually a pretty cool gift. Like, I actually bought some for myself. I mean, not just Christmas orders. We have Maltese glasses, like glass glasses if they're here. There's all kinds of stuff. It's just really, really cool. So that could be a good souvenir when you're here or get something with a Maltese cross on it. That's nice. But sadly, I don't think you're going to find any Maltese falcons, but you might. <laughs> but honestly... The Baltese glass, the Valletta glass, that's a really cool thing to get when you are here for a souvenir. And since it's such a tough glass, it actually travels pretty well. Like, I've got a bunch of stuff and brought it back before and nothing broke, nothing was scratched. I was like, oh my goodness. And I was like backpacking Europe at the time too. So that gives you an idea because sometimes when you go places you buy glassware, you think it's going to break no matter what. Here I felt it was a bit more, um, a bit more stronger. You know, I like the people who are a bit more stronger. So that was kind of cool. Now, a lot of people ask, where is Malta? Well, don't forget, Malta is a little bit south of Sicily, but don't think Malta is part of Italy. A lot of people get confused. You say, oh, it's south of Sicily. They're like, oh, it's one of those other Italian islands. No, Malta is its own country, okay? That's one important thing to remember, all right? It's south of Sicily, but it's not Italy. Though I will tell you, you might be surprised, or I should say, don't be surprised if you actually see a lot of pizza and a lot of pasta when you are here, because there is the food influence from Italy that came through here, and you can eat really good pizza and pasta when you're here. Liam had, oh my gosh, he had a pasta with rabbit ragu. It was fantastic. Now, when you are here in Malta, you're looking to get to Malta, don't forget about the ferries. One, there's a ferry from Sicily you can take to come here, which is very easy. But also, there's a simpler ferry to take when you're in Sliema or Valletta and you want to go between the two. There's actually a ferry that goes between them during the day, which is very nice, in the evening. So you can go back and forth on that without having to deal with all those insane traffic to get to one side of the basic natural harbor to the other. So that ferry can be very helpful if you're staying in Sliema to go out to have dinner or go out to explore Valletta and come back. Because honestly, don't sleep on Sliema, meaning don't not go there because it has a lot of restaurants, a lot of hotels, but also it has a lot of the apartment rentals you can go to and stay at. So that could be something to look at. And with that ferry, it makes Valletta a lot more reachable than a super long traffic line of driving going between the two, okay? Um, another thing that's really nice, when you come here to Malta, don't think it's going to break your bank. I mean, Malta's a very affordable destination. Now, I'm not saying it's super cheap, but honestly, it's a really great price when you're looking at food, wine, accommodation, going to do things. You can't beat the budget, like, happiness of being here in Malta. And that's why a lot of people come here, because you can get a great Mediterranean vacation, nice beaches, good food, great wine, nice sights, historic architecture, for a lot less than a lot of other places. So something to kind of consider when you look at your vacation destinations. So as much as I love Valletta, I got to tell you this. Don't think Valletta is your party nightlife kind of place. Great for restaurants, great for having a drink. But for nightlife stuff, you're going to go to St. Julian's. That's where that is. Don't think Valletta is the party place. That's over in St. Julian's over that way. Just, just a heads up for you. Now, I'm here in the summertime. And yes, it is hot and I am sweating. And I want to tell you, don't worry about the weather. It's always going to be beach weather when you come here in the spring, summer, fall. Heck, even in the winter, some people still like to jump in. But honestly, the weather here, sunny weather, it's going to be sunny. You're going to have a good time when you're here with the weather. However, uh, 
don't die from the humidity because honestly we came from a trip in israel and jordan where we had the desert heat we're like oh i can deal with this heat and you get here and the humidity hits you and you're just like oh it's so much so do be aware of that and when i think of all the sweat dripping down i think of that beautiful water back there what they got to tell you is don't skip the water when you're here in malta this is some of the cleanest water that you could go swimming in in europe so go and swim here it is fantastic and the thing is you can go swimming or you can take a boat ride out there you're probably going to see some boats and ferries going by behind us you can do those that's really cool you can hire your own boat and go sailing i mean Water stuff is a fun thing to do when you're here, so get out in that water. So speaking about getting in the water, one thing I think you need to realize is the beaches here, there are some sandy beaches, but there's a lot of rocky beaches here like in Valletta and Sliema. And so when you're coming here, you, you know there's going to be some rocky beaches, right? But don't think it's just rocky beaches. If you go to the south, you go to the north, you can get sandy beaches there. They are possible to find. But since there are a lot of rocky beaches, don't forget to bring some water shoes because walking in you know, on some of those rocks can be uncomfortable. Also, they can be very slick, so you want to be careful with that. But don't pass up going to the water when you're here because honestly, that crystal clear, clean blue water, huh, you can't beat it. Now let's focus on some cultural do's and don'ts of coming here to Malta. One thing I gotta tell you is don't forget to try the local soda. Kenny, that would I tell you, only buy one bottle. Do not buy a six pack, do not buy a 12 pack, just buy one to test to see if you like it because it's bitter, as they say, bittersweet refreshment. Look, it's bittersweet orange. It's like orange bitters that you make like adult beverages out of. It's like that flavor, but with no alcohol in it. So that's one thing. The locals love it. I do recommend you try it before you get it. If you want to get the local beer, don't forget to get Chisk when you are here. That is something you want to have. The local beer is very nice here. But if you want to get something really, really tasty, don't forget to get the cheese from Goals or that I love. They make fantastic goat cheese and it's so good. So make sure you have that when you're here because it's fantastic. And if you want to have the most, the most Maltese food, you want to get pastizzi. Or pastizzi's are, it's basically like puff pastry stuff with either cheese or this kind of pea mush. Like, I, I'd say it's like a pea chutney inside of it. I like the cheese ones. They are really, really good, especially when they're hot out of the oven. Oh, it's so nice. The pea one, well, I'm not the biggest fan of, but some people love it. But honestly, some of the local favorites here, you gotta have it. And I guess another one is, don't feel bad that you're eating Bugs Bunny when you are here, because rabbit is actually a traditional food here in Malta, and it's so good. Whether you're having like rabbit leg, rabbit loin, I have rabbit croquettes, I mean, rabbit stew. Don't feel bad. They are cute, but they're also really tasty. Now with all the tourists and all the crowds that are here, another thing I really gotta tell you is don't forget to make dinner reservations when you're gonna be here. Not just on Friday and Saturday nights, but pretty much any night because there's so many people that live here on this small island that a lot of places will book out. And I mean, yes, you can go eat fast food and have pastizzi, which aren't are too bad either. But uh, yeah, if you wanna go and have the rabbit, you wanna go and have the fish soup and all these kind of things when you're here that are really, really good, those restaurants you need to make reservations for so you know you have a spot even if it's just two of you you want to do that especially during high season because honestly you don't want to miss out and just eating kind of like kiosk kind of food because you'll really miss out so reservations are really key here just because there's a lack of space a lack of like lack of space for restaurants with so many tourists and everything so be smart make those reservations one of the nice things about coming here to malta is you don't have to worry about your safety this place is safe it's one of the safest countries in europe one of the safest countries in the world. So you don't really have too many of the pickpockets, bag snatches, any of those things. It's really, I mean, I can't, maybe some tax crime basically here, but in, in general, it's a super safe place to be. So you can let your kids go grab something, you know, at, at a restaurant or have them go grab something at one of the food trucks or have them go explore. I mean, it's really kind of a nice thing to be able to relax when you are here. It is a very safe place. So you don't have to worry about that. But I will say is um, you might wanna, you know, don't mess with the weather or I said don't mess with the sun because it can be very sunny here. I mean, it's sunny here all the time, so the weather's actually pretty great, but it can be a bit much sometimes. And the humidity, especially if you're like in Valletta and Sliema, that, that humidity that they have here can be a bit much. And if you're coming from places where it's more of that, the dry heat, like you really notice that humidity in the heat when you're here. So do be safe. Don't forget to stay hydrated. Don't forget to have a hat. Don't forget to have, you know, you know, basically sunblock on to keep yourself safe. Cause that's really the only like danger thing here, aside from maybe the traffic, but, uh, yeah, just something to kind of think about. Um, another thing I think is really cool is when you come to Malta, you, they have so much pride 
not just in Malta, but it's more like they have pride in their own towns and villages. When you go around here, you'll see them kind of competing whoever who can have the best festa, you know, the best party, but the festa when they have it for their, their saints days, when they kind of celebrate with their bands and everything that are here. Like you really see that. I really enjoy seeing those towns, those communities really celebrate. When you go around, you'll see them when they light up their churches, you know, with the Christmas lights kind of stuff. And they have the, the banners hanging, the decorations everywhere. It's a really kind of cool thing. And that that pride they have in their local community, because it's interesting, because it's not just Malta. It's more like their community, their local community comes first, and then it's their Maltese pride. Now, you know how that influence of the Brits? Well, here's one thing I want to tell you. Don't worry if you don't speak Maltese, because no one speaks Maltese except for the people from Malta. And when you see it, you'll be like, I have absolutely no idea what's there. But what's cool is you'll see it in Maltese, and then right below it'll be in English. English is everywhere here. Not everyone speaks it perfectly, but English is really the second language here, and it, you're going to see it all over the place. And honestly, with as many foreigners have come here, as many immigrants have moved here, many people like expats living here, English is the de facto language. So you're not going to have a problem with the language where you are here, but just know when you see the Maltese language, you're like, huh? What the heck is that? Th that's Maltese. Hey, on that British note, uh, something else you might need to be aware of, the plugs are definitely UK plugs. And sometimes you might have to flip the switch to turn them on. So just be aware of that you might need an adapter. And if you're coming here and you're looking to relax, one thing I like to do when I go travel is like, hey, if I can get a pedicure or a manicure or like the fish pedicures, all those kind of things, they, they could be a nice relaxing thing, like a spa treatment one. And one thing I got to say, going around, seeing the Maltese ladies with their fingernails. Look, if you want to get your nails done, don't pass it up here in Malta because obviously going around town, around the country, I saw the locals love getting their nails done. So don't pass up on doing that here too. Anyway, I hope you liked your list of the don'ts and more or less do's of visiting Malta. What are some other things that tourists should definitely don't not forget to do when they do come here to Malta or things they really shouldn't do just out of safety? Let us know in the comments below to help other travelers enjoy this beautiful island. And I'll say bye from here in Malta.